Hi guys, this is Miles Vandergrift, and I want to just walk you through um, what I've learned in the last five, six years on how to plan a next generation science standard uh, unit or lesson. Um, a lot of what I am going to be talking about comes from this Roger Bybee's book called Translating the Next Generation Science Standards for Classroom Instruction. Um, even though this book was uh, from 2013, I continually go back to it. Um, I've read it multiple times. Um, it is 2020 right now, so it's seven years old. But again, um, pretty amazing information in here. Roger Bobby helped write some of the performance expectations for the Next Generation Science Standard and has been teaching um, science for multiple decades um, and is a, a wealth of, of information. Also, using uh, the book here, Ambitious Science Teaching. We've got a lot of information there. And then again, How to Engage Students, Dave Burgess's book, um, Teaching Like a Pirate. So these are some great resources here. On top of that, I've been using um, a, a lot of Paul Anderson's, probably the last uh, seven or eight videos on um, why the next generation science standards are important and his scientific inquiry model that he's been using in a lot of his work. So I just wanted to do a shout out to Paul Anderson and many of the things I've been learning from him as well. So um, he has a wealth of information at his uh, Wonder of Science website there. And there's you know assessments and resources and phenomena and videos and templates. So that helps tremendously. So again, what you want to do is you want to um, have a phenomena that lines up with one of the standards. And so again, Roger Bybee talks about starting with the performance expectation, the standard. But Paul mentions that it's really good to have it anchored in some type of phenomena. Instead of just starting with that performance expectation, what is some phenomena that kind of um, you can you can start off with that supports that standard? So um, I'm going to start out with this one here, uh, the Eiffel Tower phenomenon. Um, sometimes you can just think of a phenomenon you've experienced in your life. And so many of you might know that the Eiffel Tower is about 17 centimeters taller in the summer than the winter. And um, so what you want to do is you want to start out with choosing the performance expectation. So go right here to nextgen.org and then from there type in, you know, I'm going to do middle school and I'm going to do structure of property and matter, then hit the search and then you come up with here and I was I think we're going to do PSCF4 1-4. And you can see it's here, develop a model that predicts and describes changes in particle motion, temperature and state of a pure substance when the thermal energy is added or removed. And again, these clarification statements are really good in guiding um, your work as well. And then from here, you can take a look. These are from Paul Anderson, Wonder of Science. I'm going to zoom in right here. This is the standard I'm going to be focusing on. And you can see there's the science and engineering practice in blue. The DCI is in this kind of gold, yellowish color. And then the cross-cutting concept is green. So after you've chosen your performance expectation, you want to choose a phenomenon. And again, this is something that Paul encourages. Uh, it's not in Roger Bybee's book, but I love this piece of you want to choose a phenomena that supports that standard. Uh, and there's many, many places. There's Project Phenomena. It's a San Diego County Office of Ed. Um, you've got uh, TJ McKenna and his phenomena for NGSS. You've got the um, Georgia Teach for Teachers for Georgia and its phenomena bank. And then again, Paul Anderson right here, if you click on the phenomena here, you can get quite a bit for different uh, performance expectations. Sometimes you can even go just on YouTube, unique and most dangerous natural phenomena. And there's some pretty cool things out there. Again, just be careful checking your uh, sources there that it is legit and it's not some urban legend but it really is a naturally occurring ph uh, phenomena that's legitimate so 
1999, my wife and I made our way to Paris, France. First time I'd ever been there. And we, this is a picture of us up in the top of the Eiffel Tower. And again, I was surprised to find out that it is 17 centimeters average taller in the summer than in the winter. There's me right here trying to do that famous picture of holding that in my hand. So I, so that's so we've picked the uh, assessment, and then from the uh, uh, the performance expectation, we've chosen a phenomena. It's the uh, the Eiffel Tower, the thermal expansion of the Eiffel Tower. And then now I've created this assessment here. You can pause and take a look at it. You can read the question yourself here that I've couched it in. You can see here I've got a word bank um, and it ties directly into that standard. And then from there I have a question that is, and if you notice here in each question, I try to do my best to do uh, the DOK level, level four here, which is a uh, create and design. This would be a level one, which is draw and label these different phases here. So, and then this would be a level two, summarize the role, the states of matter, and I think weather. So after you create your assessment, you wanna create a, um, an exemplar, a student exemplar or a rubric. So it would be a really good idea for you to take your own assessment and just kind of imagine what an exemplary student's response would look like. Uh, here's again, mine's pretty weak on this one. I created this a couple years back. I can just, I didn't really know what to do. So I just put, you know, exemplary is going to be 10, a good's going to be an eight and a seven. And, and actually what I did is I gave this assessment to students and then I went through my top students and I pulled their responses. I read through them and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is good. This is what I'm looking for. And I created an, uh, a rubric from their exemplary responses. Um, I'm not recommending that you do this, but again, I'm just I'm this is kind of my journey and how I was learning as I was going along. Um, so here's what exemplar would look like. Um, you can see the response is here, some keywords I'm looking for, and they even used another piece of paper to kind of do their zoom in bubbles. You can see here the particles moving or not moving as much. These are some other responses here that students done different levels and then here's the uh, the recall question and you can see their uh, diagram here and then the weather question and a little more details here now from here um, I use the ambitious science teaching uh, book quite a bit chapter 6 is making thinking visible through models part one and chapter seven is allowing students to show what they know modeling part two and so what i did is i used some templates in there the second year that i tried this assessment and what they recommend is giving a little more structure and scaffolding so they encourage students to do a before during and after so again if you take a look back here this is what we're looking at when i first started out and then giving a little more structure. What is it like uh, before, during, and after? So this is winter, spring, and summer. That's how some people labeled it. And you can see how things are changing over time. And then on the back of it, they were explaining what's going on in each, uh, each one. There's another example here. Again, not, gr not grading whoops, on students' ability to draw, but if it's accurate. Uh, for the, the kinetic energy and the molecular uh, motion. Create um, an instructional sequence. So again, now that you've created the assessment, you've created the rubric, what's an instructional sequence that is going to allow students to give them the skills and uh, the knowledge to uh, show mastery with that performance expectation? What do they need to perform to show that they have uh, understanding of the standard. So this is the blank template that I provide for my students. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like filled in. Um, so again, you can pause and take read through this here. And you can see here, so this looks like about almost two weeks of instruction. So I start off with the ball and ring demonstration. Many of you have seen this before. I think I have a video clip of I'll try to put it through the ring. Take a look. 
Okay, now put it in the water. Wait, 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 watch the, watch the fire. Yeah, watch the flame. Okay, now put it through the ring. And everyone clap. I was really amazed um, how students really enjoyed this. Even though it's very simple, um, some of their minds were just blown. Like, how is that possible? What is going on, right? And then so from there, I had students create models. This is before I came across um, the Wonder of Science um, templates for creating models and asking questions, which I now use. Uh, but I was just having them use their science notebook. And you can see right here, this is before and this is after. And I can see that the students think that the molecules are actually growing and getting bigger. Looks like there's some space here. So let's take a look at what this student's thinking. Go! Okay. So before it was like this and the particles in the metal brass were metal spear brass were small and then when it heated up the particles from the thermal energy got bigger and so that's what I think after what happened. So again the only way we can make students uh, thinking visible is actually either for them to talk or for them to write or them to create a model so we can see what's inside of their head and we can see if their understanding is is correct or there's some misconceptions um, and you can see some other models here where it looks like their spacing is increasing this is the first thing this is the opening phenomena of this uh, lesson or this little unit let's see what this student has to say so you're vibrating and then when you put it above the Bunsen burner um, the particles gain thermal energy and they spread out so I'm just curious really quick so right here this is less thermal energy uh -huh. and are the particles smaller or bigger here uh, smaller. Or, uh, the same size. and right here they're the same size yeah, so so what's the only difference between the two they're expanding. so you're saying the space between them is more here than here uh -huh. all right everyone clap please thank you um, and then from there, after they worked on that, we did some stuff with dry ice. We did some, and they created, uh, I think they designed their own investigation and conducted that investigation and collected data and then shared that. Um, no, I'm just gonna have to Hang on, wait, wait, guys, 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 stop it. Stop it. Look, wait, guys, look, look. Stop messing with me. Wait, where'd the water go? Guys, wait for it. Where did the water go? You see how it's like that? You see how it's spreading out? Look, it's like it's like sand underwater. Look, go like this. Look, where'd the water go? And it spreads it's out. Guys, look. Wait, turn it. And then from there, we did. Um, oh, up, I got that on camera. And with just air, and then they were observing uh, the balloon. So they created some models with that. Then I gave them, I think, one period to um, use the FET, lamps, FET lab simulation with states of matter. And there was quite a bit they could do with that, with temperature and pressure. Um, enjoyed that. And then sometimes I like just getting off the computers and actually just going really kinesthetic. So I created this. Um, so after they had gathered that information and, and understood some things of what was going on, we created uh, this physical model here. Of phase changes. I don't. And all right, energy. let me see a liquid. Solid. Okay, go sublimation. Sublimation. Plasma. And deionization. Back to a gas. Liquid. Solid. Bose-Einstein condensate. They should barely move F all, remember? So they really, really enjoyed that. And then I had students make their own thermometer. I, I couldn't find any pictures for this. Uh, with I think it was a flask and a stopper with some glass tubing. Um, and we used, not Bunsen burner, we used a hot plate and then some water and then red, uh, red dye uh, or red food coloring to create their own thermometer and make models of that. And then they were ready for the um, assessment. And so they'd, they'd know nothing about the Eiffel Tower. They didn't know anything about the phenomena of the thermal expansion. So it was a new novel experience. They were taking everything they had learned, all of the skills and knowledge, and applying it to a new uh, phenomena, a new situation to figure out. And then after they had done that, um, 
we ended up, I ended up by bringing, I have a giant doer and I have a friend, you can see the doer right over here. I have a friend that has a company with different gases. And uh, so I think I got a, close to about six gallons of liquid nitrogen. And we do all sorts of really cool uh, uh, demonstrations. This one obviously is the latent frost effect. Right? And the details is the thin nitrogen gas glove that's created around my hand. And then we ended up by um, making some cryogenic ice cream. So this was almost two weeks long. And again, this was dealing with the one, um, one NGSS standard um, with about two weeks, almost two weeks of instruction. And I think I had, so let's take a look here. So that was the lesson sequence. And then you're gonna create, uh, for your assignment, you're gonna be creating from that lesson sequence, you're gonna be using this template that I've provided for you. Uh, part of it's UBD here, the Grant Wiggins stuff, and then you've got here at the very end, um, what's the learning plan? And then we're gonna flesh that out with the five E's here, if at all possible, how we're gonna support different students uh, in our population. And then right here, specifically really spelled out, how's this lesson addressing each of these and which one it's building towards. Um, let's see here. So here's the actual assessment. So at the beginning of the period, I actually walked them through this presentation, telling them about how amazing the Eiffel Tower is, how many people visit it, when it was built, um, how it was kind of built, show them some pictures here compared to some other buildings, just pique their interest just really quickly. The Short Eiffel Tower is 300 meters, video. 65 centimeters. I think this video is like two minutes long, maybe some interesting facts. Uh, show them some side views and the rivets. And then I teach them how to do a zoomed in bubble, of, uh, or remind them again. I'm getting this stuff from Bozeman Science. Um, I think on one of his videos about creating scientific models. So I took some screenshots of that to kind of show them how to label. And then from there, yeah, I think we touched a bit on thermal expansion. So this was probably about an eight minute intro before they took the assessment. And one, and then last, briefly just talked about the water cycle. Just briefly, um, that was one of the things we were touching on. So again, this is probably my second attempt at writing a, an assessment based on a performance expectation. And I just thought of the, uh, the phenomena, here we go, of the Eiffel Tower. And I, it was an experience. I was there in 1999 with my wife. Uh, we'd spent some time in Europe and uh, in England. And so I was like, wow. So again, sometimes these phenomena can be local. A lot of times if they're local, like I know in San Diego recently, we had the red tide and the bioluminescence that was phenomenal during March, uh, right when COVID hit. I had never seen it that bright. My daughter and I ended up going surfing a couple times during that time. And it was just literally probably the brightest and the most spectacular. I felt like I was surfing in Avatar with all these, the blue colors. It just was electrifying. It's really cool. So hopefully this example of um, the uh, Eiffel Tower assessment that I created for this performance expectation kind of gives you an idea of what I'm looking for with uh, the project you're putting together for your assignment five. And hopefully this video is helpful.